All right, so um, aging is a really relevant topic in a PT setting because um, a lot of the people we work with are um, older people. And well, and honestly, we're all aging all the time from the minute we're born or probably before that um, until we die. And so um, it's nice to know what the physiological changes and effects of aging are and how that affects pathology and recovery from um, different illnesses and injuries. So um, by definition, senescence is the biological process that leads to aging. Um, it supposedly begins prior to birth. So there are different theories as to why we age. Sometimes senescence is referring to the period from the onset of old age until death. So I guess I'll leave that up to you to decide when the onset of old age is. But um, there's, there are actually physiological effects um, that um, cause uh, aging. So we'll talk about them. So the aging process, um, the rates and effects of aging really vary among individuals. And I'm sure you've observed this in um, people in your life and you know just people out there in the world. Your, um, how the age that you appear may not match your chronological age. Um, when I was uh, in the when I was in college in the early 80s, I uh, worked in the emergency room and on the ambulance. And um, a lot of times you're you're getting people and you're sort of trying to estimate their age and um, maybe they're uh, figuring out what medications they're going to give them or they're we're trying to get a, a a picture a clinical picture of what's going on with this person and. Um, the area that I worked in, there was a really high uh, population of um, Japanese people in the area, and um, or um, Japanese Americans that had emigrated from Japan. Well, I'd get these um, little Japanese ladies, older ladies, and they looked so young. I had the worst time um, estimating their age because I would guess they were maybe 60 and they were 85. <laughs> so certain. Um, depending on your genetic makeup, you might look a lot younger than you are, or you might look a lot older than you are, or m maybe on the inside you, you look older, like the picture of Dorian Gray. But um, the rate of changes depend a lot on your genetic makeup. Of course, your lifestyle can have an effect. Um, you can think of lots of different lifestyle things if you um, uh, sit out in the sun all the time and eat unhealthy food and never exercise, that's going to certainly um, affect your aging. Your health status, so how many disease processes are going on in your body at any one time. And cardiovascular fitness is a big deal. So um, turn off the uh, video right now and go out for a walk or a run and then come back and we'll listen to the rest of it. Okay. So you guys all had a nice uh, cardiovascular event there. <laughs> so overall, um, women live longer than men. In general, of course, individuals uh, will vary. Um, for most people, a general reduction function occurs throughout the body. So the most vulnerable tissues to aging are the ones that can't regenerate effectively. The central nervous system, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and kidneys. Kidneys are hugely important in a lot of the systems in our body, and those guys just aren't going to regenerate. And so um, um, breakdown in the aging process in your kidneys, um, that can cause a lot of problems for you. So there are lots of theories of why we age, um, and really it's, it's not known specifically why we age, but some of it, it might be genetically programmed. Um, in the uh, last quarter we talked about apoptosis, which is that program cell death, where cells just reach the end of their path and they, and they self-destruct, basically. Um, there's a wear and tear theory of aging, which um, it uh, says really accumulated waste products in your cells and altered proteins and um, lipose fusion, which is the um, it's the storage of breakdown materials basically. So when you look at this little picture, those uh, little blobs in between the cells, that's a storage of accumulated wastes. 
it's like little um, little blobs of waste throughout the cells and um, degenerative changes in collagen so collagen changes and becomes weaker and less resilient as we get older um, and random errors during cell mitosis is another um, theory of why we might age and that can cause altered proteins because there's some random errors um, as the, you're copying over the DNA that causes altered proteins and you have um, just buildup of more waste products in your body. Um, latent viruses are sometimes um, thought to contribute to aging. So remember when we were talking about um, infection and we said sometimes the viral DNA will just um, in, uh, attach itself in with your DNA and then just travel around with you forever um, only to maybe be expressed sometime later on that could be a problem increased autoimmune reactions so people definitely have um, increased hypersensitivity reactions allergic reactions as they get older um, it might just be our immune system is starting to break down and so we have more um, autoimmune reactions where our immune system is um, fighting things in our own body. Enviro environmental agents certainly, um, ultraviolet rays and other um, environmental agents can affect aging. Um, free radicals which are um, basically unstable molecules. They're um, traveling around without electrons in their outer ring and they can um, damage um, DNA and RNA. They can lead to cancer and other diseases and peroxides um, are also free radicals they can um, damage uh, they're very reactive um, and so they can react with the uh, molecules in your cells and cause problems so um, with aging you get hormonal changes so with the exception of estrogen and testosterone um, which fade out as we get older um, the level of hormone secretion remains relatively constant in our bodies but the thing that changes is the number of tissue receptors decreases so the speed of hormonal response may diminish so we have a lot of different um, ways that our body controls things the nervous system controls a lot of things the endocrine system controls a lot of things so if if we have um, reduced number of receptors um, we are not going to have the same response to um, the hormonal signals from the endocrine system and that's going to change how our body heals and how our body responds to things. So with males and females there are um, different changes in the reproductive system. Um, both of them have changes. Um, women on average um, reach menopause around 51 years of course that's an average it could be earlier or later where the ovaries stop responding to follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and they stop ovulating um, so then you get declining estrogen and progesterone levels and cessation of the menstrual cycle and hot flashes um, mood swings can um, be caused by changes in the female reproductive system from aging. Um, hormonal changes and social expectations and fatigue can be associated with those mood swings as well. And dys uh, dyspareunia, which is painful sexual intercourse because of thinning of the vaginal mucosa, loss of elasticity, and decreased glandular secretions. So um, there are definitely some big changes as females age. With males, um, their testosterone levels also decline gradually, um, so they get decreased muscle mass because testosterone helps build muscle mass. The testes decrease in size, sperm production is somewhat reduced, um, the glandular secretions of the prostate decrease, and um, benign prostatic um, hypertrophy is common, so that enlarged prostate um, can affect um, the urinary system and it can affect some other systems too. So male and female there are changes in the skin and mucosa. Some are related to genetic factors um, and some are related to other things, sun exposure and weather. Um, but the skin and mucous mem membranes um, become thinner and more easily damaged and the dermis is also thinner so there's um, diminished um, subcutaneous tissue 
So you don't have the same cushioning effect of the subcutaneous tissue and the number of specialized structures, sweat glands and receptors also um, decline. And so um, older people, their skin might be more fragile. Um, I was on uh, Friday last week, um, there was, I was working with a group in um, our joint replacement program, our joint gym. There was an older man um, who's 87 and he just bumped into one of the pieces of equipment on his elbow and tore, got a little tear in his skin. And now uh, we had to clean that off and bandage it. Um, and it was so easy for him to do because his skin is just so thin there. And so th that's a real um, consideration. And when we're talking about any kind of um, brace or sling or um, orthotic or assistive device, we have to make sure that it's not um, damaging skin. So the skin also becomes drier because of reduced sebum. It appears more wrinkled because of reduced elastic fibers and the collagen fibers are less flexible. Um, sometimes you'll get lesions like skin tags or keratoses, um, which are those little darkened spots. So when you look at this picture with the um, younger side and the older side, you can see the differences. Um, you get graying of the hair because the melanocytes are reduced in number and thinning of the hair because the number of hair follicles decreases. So um, there are definitely a lot of skin and mucosa changes that go on with aging. And that's one of the ways we identify when we say someone looks older or looks younger. A lot of times it's the appearance of their skin that's cluing us into that. So besides the skin changes, there are also cardiovascular changes. Um, the size and number of cardiac muscle fibers decrease, so it's harder for the heart to pump blood. Um, fatty tissue and collagen fibers accumulate um, in the um, cardiac muscle. So you get reduced strength of contraction. The heart valves thicken and become less flexible. And vascular changes may cause a decrease to the oxygen supply to the heart. And so your cardiac reserve is diminished. So it's harder to recover from things. It's harder to um, um, it's harder to uh, rebound. Um, arteriosclerosis is a, a pathology of the cardiovascular system that's associated with aging. Um, and we talked about this last quarter: loss of elasticity and accumulation of collagen, thickening of the arteriolar walls increased peripheral resistance, which can increase blood pressure, and tissue ischemia because um, the tissue is being deprived of oxygen. And um, tissue ischemia or um, arteriosclerosis can cause nonspecific brain changes because brain tissues are being deprived of oxygen. So that can affect, um, it can have some dementia-like effects or it can affect short-term memory and other brain function. Um, atherosclerosis, um, hyperlipidemia is common in aging people. It promotes accumulation of uh, cholesterol in the walls of large arteries and that increases peripheral resistance, potentially increasing hypertension and it can cause tissue ischemia again. It's a common cause of angina, um, heart or chest pain, myocardial infarction, peripheral vascular disease and strokes. So we also get loss of calcium and bone mass. Um, there's a higher incidence in postmenopausal women, but um, there's also a high incidence of osteoporosis in men. Not as uh, not as high as in women, but um, the um, the latest numbers from the American Bone Health, which is an organization similar to the American Cancer Society, and the um, um, really the idea is to promote uh, education about osteoporosis. Their um, latest things, they said 75% of women and 25% of men will have an osteoporotic fracture in their lifetime. So that's huge. That's a, that's a large number. Um, fractures of the spine, pelvis, and limbs are common. So um, with men, they're more likely to have hip fractures. Um, with women, they're more likely to have um, spine and pelvic fractures. So um, not that they don't also have hip fractures. 
But um, risk factors include your ancestry. There's your genetic component that you can't control. So if you're um, of Asian or Northern European ancestry, having a low body mass index. So if you're small, you're not um, putting as much demand on your bones. And remember Wolf's Law from kinesiology where bones respond to the stresses we put on them. If you're really tiny, you're not putting a lot of stress on your bones. And um, so that can contribute to osteoporosis. Decreased estrogen levels can't really control that. Um, sedentary or inactive lifestyle, you can certainly control that. Um, decreased intake of calcium, um, vitamin C and D. And decreased intestinal um, calcium absorption. So sometimes, um, just like with pernicious anemia, where taking a vitamin B12 supplement orally isn't going to necessarily um, have an effect because um, it's the, a problem in the intestines. Um, de uh, decreased intestinal calcium absorption is still happening even if you have an adequate intake of calcium. So the picture here shows some um, osteoporotic bones and they look brittle, huh? So um, for risk reduction, the, um, adequate calcium and vitamin D intake, weight-bearing exercise like walking, Walking is a great exercise. And um, bone, dancing, bone dancing testing for women at age 50 or earlier. So one of the big things about um, osteoporosis is a lot of it has to do with where you started in the first place. Everybody's going to lose bone density, but it's a matter of how much you lose and the rate you lose it. So if you were... Um, Act, the, time, the best bone building time is when you're in your um, teens and 20s. That's when you're building bone. And so if you were active and did, did impact sports and things like that in your teens and 20s, well then you're starting at a good place. And um, you can't do anything about your ancestry, but you can do something about your, um, your activity. So after that, after when you get into your 30s, 40s, etc., you're just you're maintaining the bone density that you built when you were younger. So um, for um, children and teens and young adults, adequate nutrition and exercise is hugely important. It's going to affect their um, how well they age later on, or it's going to have an effect certainly. So osteoarthritis is um, an effect of aging. It's degeneration of the cartilage in the joints might be associated with trauma or sports injuries. Um, the articular cartilage thins, usually in the larger weight-bearing joints like hips and knees, and sometimes ankles and <laughs> shoulders, even though we're, we're not usually bearing a lot of weight through our shoulders. But um, it causes pain and stiffness, and sometimes people need joint replacements. In fact, hip and knee replacements are now the most common surgery in the United States. So, and if you work in physical therapy, no matter what setting you work in, you are going to work with people with osteoarthritis and with hip and knee replacements. Herniated intervertebral disc. So the fiber cartilage in the intervertebral disc degenerates with age. Remember from kinesiology, you had the, um, the uh, annulus fibrosis, the fiber cartilage, and then the nucleus pulposus in the middle. Um, the intervertebral disc starts to degenerate, the fiber cartilage degenerates, you get loss of height. Um, sudden stress on the back might result in herniation where that nucleus pulposus um, bulges out or gets extruded out of the um, annulus fibrosis. It can cause pressure on the spinal nerves and result in severe back pain. So um, the interesting thing is probably everybody over the age of about 35 has some bulging discs and whether or not um, it ends up herniated depends on the, the stresses in your back. So um, bulging discs don't necessarily um, cause pain but um, chances are good you have a bulging disc in there somewhere. So other musculoskeletal changes with aging, your skeletal muscle mass um, declines with aging. Um, it's dependent on your level of fitness. I mean, you don't have to go. Uh, you don't have to go quietly. You can go kicking and screaming. <laughs> That's my policy. So, but the strength of muscle contractions might decrease. Flexibility is certainly reduced, and people become more stiff. 
um, coordination and balance are reduced. So um, in the picture here, it shows the um, degeneration in the spine. So I always say the two things that we need to, all need to work on for the rest of our lives are balance and posture. So respiratory changes with aging, ventilation can be limited because the elasticity in the lung tissue is reduced. You can get calcification of the costal cartilage, reducing rib movement, and we know those rib movements are important in ventilation. Um, the skeletal muscles weaken, and so that affects the intercostal muscles. That can affect your ventilation as well. So your expiration can be reduced. Your residual volume is increased. Um, so you have more of that stale air in your lungs. And you have decreased lung expansion for deep breathing and coughing. Um, you get vascular changes with aging, which can cause um, decreased perfusion of oxygenated blood and reduce gas change, uh, exchange in the alveoli. And that affects the whole body, of course. So um, <clears throat> neurological changes, there is a natural reduction in the number of neurons with aging. We start out with way more neurons when we're um, born than we will end up having later on. And a lot of the um, number of neurons and their function is um, affected in the developing nervous system by how we use it. So, but naturally, the neurons that don't get used die off. Um, so it's, we have a natural reduction of neurons with aging. And as we get older, we have even more of a reduction. We get lipid accumulations in neurons, just like we get it in the um, arteries. We get loss of myelin, so the um, conduction of nerve impulses is slowed, and decreased response to neurotransmitters. So I said earlier we had a decreased response to, to hormones, to the endocrine controls, and now we have a decreased response to the nervous system controls too. So decreased responses across the board, and that results in a lower, um, slower response time. You can imagine how that can affect things like balance and the potential for falling. It increases your risk of falling. There are changes in your vision because your lens becomes less flexible. There's reduced accommodation to low light. The lens tends to become yellow and less transparent. And if that becomes really um, clouded, it's called a cataract. Of course, um, you can get cataract surgery and get it fixed, which is nice, and a lot of people do get that. Um, night vision is reduced because you have reduced accommodation. So the picture here, it's a... Um, it's a representation of how someone's night vision might look when they're older. So there's a really good reason for not driving around at night when you're 85. Um, color vision might be reduced, um, and that can affect things like um, if you're on medications, distinguishing different medications. Um, it, it's you know that that can be have an effect on you definitely, and vascular degeneration might affect the retina, so you just don't get as good an input from your vision system. The vision system is also a big contributor to balance. It's one of the three main sensory inputs to balance. And so if you have um, changes in your vision, that can affect your balance as well. You have other changes in sensation. Hearing loss is usually caused by degenerative changes in the inner ear. Um, one of my uh, former students and uh, colleagues uh, said one time he just Loved working with older people. He'd met so many people in their late 90s who were just so awesome. He said, not a darn one of them can hear, but they all, <laughs> but other than that, they're great. But that is pretty common, hearing loss with aging. The sense of taste might be diminished, and that could contribute to um, anorexia or loss of appetite because smell is a big um, part of appetite. So um, decreased sense of smell can become a safety issue, too, because you don't notice that the gas is on or something like that. Um, ability to discriminate among odors is reduced. And diminished taste and smell can impair your appetite and nutrition. So lots of changes in sensation can have a lot of effects in your body. Gastrointestinal changes can affect your nutrition. Um, maintain, a maintenance of good nutrition can be a problem for older people because of that Decreased sense of smell and taste, they just don't have the appetite that they used to have. Um, and older individuals, sometimes a retired person on a fixed income, might lack the money for adequate nutrition. That's, that's a bad situation. 
Um, bad nutrition or gastrointestinal problems can cause muscle weakness and fatigue, and that can contribute to a higher falls risk as well. So um, lots of problems potentially in that area. Um, obesity in older individuals increases the cardiac workload, increases um, the risks of atherosclerosis and hypertension, and the risks of type 2 diabetes. Um, diabetes is a terrible disease. We'll talk about it more in the endocrine chapter, but it can wreak havoc on your body, so you should avoid it at all costs. Um, you also get atrophy of muc uh, mucosa and glands, so it reduces your digestive secretion. You get impaired absorption of vitamin B12, calcium, and iron. And constipation is common in older adults, and constipation can lead to hemorrhoids, and um, they cause their own problems. So um, urinary system changes. Kidney function is reduced because of loss of neurons, and the kidneys have a diminished ability to adapt to changes in electrolyte and acid levels. We talked about this way back in the fluid imbalance chapter, how the kidneys adapt to different electrolyte changes and acid-base changes. Um, the loss of nephrons means your kidneys have a diminished ability to adapt and reduced capacity to excrete drugs. So if an an elderly person is given a medication, the same medication after surgery, say, that a younger person is given, it might take longer for them to get it out of their system and they might have a higher effect. So they might get into the toxic range more easily because they're not excreting it as quickly as the younger person would be. Um, weakened urinary sphincter and bladder can cause um, nocturia, which is frequent uh, urination, and incontinence the involuntary voiding of urine. So that can be a problem for um, the aging person as well. Other factors that um, contribute to problems in aging, um, infections, delayed healing because of a reduced rate of cell mitosis, less rapid immune responses. So all of the systems in the body are affected. Cancer, because just over your lifetime you have a higher cumulative exposure to carcinogens, the sun. Um, smoke and other carcinogens and autoimmune disorders become more prevalent as you get older as well because again your immune system is not working at its optimum. So uh, multiple disorders are common in the older population. Um, integrated treatment for all interacting problems is necessary so having really good medical care, having a good primary that's on top of that and knows how to deal with the geriatric patient is really important because changes in one system often cause a cascade of other problems and you can get synergistic effects from different medications um, that can cause their own problems. So um, I just liked this cartoon, I thought it was funny. The doctor says, we can't find anything wrong with you so we're going to treat you for symptom deficit disorder. <laughs> So um, having a good doctor that doesn't treat you for symptom deficit disorder is important for aging. So for older people, it's really common for them to have a large number of medications, whether they're prescription or um, herbal or over-the-counter medications. There's increased risk of undesirable drug interactions. Um, compliance may be a problem either because there are just so many to take and it's hard to keep track of them all, or like, oh, one you have to take with food, one you have to take without food, and uh, one you have to take at night, and the other one you have to take in the morning. Compliance can be an issue just keeping track of all of that. Um, it's often necessary to adjust uh, dosage and drug combinations because of unpredictable absorption, distribution, and elimination of drugs. So I like the picture, they combine all your medications into one gigantic convenient <laughs> dose. So um, a lot of times um, people will uh, work with their doctor to um, adjust their drugs as they go along. There's some medications where if you're over a certain age, they won't let you stay on them for too long because they don't want it to build up to toxic levels in your body. So um, a lot of times um, things like antidepressants and um, certain other medications they will, uh, someone over a certain age, they'll take them off every so often just to make sure they're not getting toxic effects.